Father, we bless you. We thank you. We are here because of you. We are here also to motivate each other to worship. We are here to bless your name. Holy Spirit, we ask you to anoint us. We ask you to be with this service. We ask you to lead it the way you want. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you our emotion, our thoughts, everything in us. We rebuke the enemy, everything that is contrary to your will, we send them out of the door. Lord, manifest straight forth your hands to work miracles, to do the power things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Let's look at verse number. Uh, we were looking at verse number 3. And we have seen about the holy, about the anointing, about the power of God, God as our owner. Then. In the second part of verse 3, it says, this is Isaiah, excuse me. This is Isaiah chapter 6. We look at verse 3, the B part, it says, The entire earth, the whole earth, is full of his glory. Do you want the glory of the Lord to begin to manifest on earth? To manifest in your business, in your marriage, in the life of your children? Do you want to see God's heavy and weighty presence come upon your resources so that you do not need to struggle before a need arises in your life is already met. Do you want to see the heaviness of God, the weightiness of God, the, the sweets, I will use the word, the sweets, cloud of God's presence upon your life. I mean, something that you feel inside your physical body we are not talking of spirit now i mean in your physical body you feel this tingling like i was praying with one of my sisters and another brother and i'm asking for holy ghost energy to enter into them and it suddenly comes you see god is not somebody to be argued with are to debate about because you can feel that he's there in fact in many cases the presence comes as a mighty wind that comes upon a city comes upon where you are the room or the place where you are or where you guys are gathered. The, the presence might come like a warm feeling upon you. 
that convicts you and tears something out of your body that stops something from happening. The entire earth is full of his glory. But if you want to experience, I call this the almightiness, sweetness of God. This is what we call the glorified lifestyle um, of incredible events. You see, most of you are looking for little things from God. When you begin to look for things like the glory itself, that's when both the little, the medium, and the big things just are solved. One visitation from God will solve all your problems. Amen. You see, the the uh, the seraphims spoke of three things about God. They spoke of the levels of holiness which bet also the levels of the anointing. They also spoke about God as owner. God is not just the one who saves you. He's also the one who want to be your owner. And then the seraphim spoke of God as the master of tremendous cloud of powerful forces, entities of greatness, hosts. He is the, 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 the ruler over a mighty host. So let me share three things, three revelations you need to know tonight. And we have to honor the Holy Spirit for these revelations that the seraphims have revealed to me. Because it also has to do with your prosperity, your healing, and your everything. The holiness the Lordship, the protection, the war machinery, the mighty luminaries of heaven, holiness, the holiness, the Lordship, and the, and the great multitude of those who can fight and those who can go out. So when you see the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts is not just about those that fight war on our behalf and on behalf of the kingdom of heaven. But it also has to do with the hosts of angelic beings and the powerful human beings. Get this, get this, get this. If you get this, you got it. God being the Lord of hosts means that he has a host of workers to take care of any kind of need at any given time, at any given place. Please write that down. God being called the Lord of hosts means that he is he has workers, both angelic and humans, who are able to take care of any kind of thing for you, any time, any location, no matter what the problem is. So when you hear host, 
host is not just about war faring angels it's also about angelic and human personalities who god can use at any given time to perform a particular task on your behalf let me also explain something else his holiness also speaks of his ability to draw you deep calls to deep if you allow god he will rob off his trait of being holy which means he can stop you if you're willing and if you are willing to pay the price too god will stop certain things from happening to you and you from doing certain things that will not please him he can do it so so listen carefully this is very very important it ought to speak of your ability to begin to live like him that's what holiness means your ability to begin to behave like him talk like him act like him and have what he has so let me let me share this with you you must reach a place where um who is that with a child who is that with a child could you could you mute your phone please i love that baby which baby is that please which baby is that oh my niece <laughs> huh my niece okay all right i'll take her out no 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 you don't need to you can mute you can mute the phone who am i talking to please okay um see the holiness of god also means the ability of god to draw you into his way of living life in fact holiness also describe the character and act of how god does his business please i want you to reach a place in your life where you can have what god has god never call you to to unnecessary struggle and unnecessary suffering he, that's why he put talents and gifts in you i am asking you to go to our website www.idikaimeriministry.com idika Mary ministry.com and you look at millionaire 500 read it please read read it please spend some time to read what we put out there on our website it's gonna be of much help to you so that you really know this <sighs> holiness means your ability to accept what god has spoken about you and begin to behave that way and begin to go that route and when you look carefully you will realize that the almighty god is calling you to have what he has prosperity is the reason for you being who you are it's not poverty prosperity is the reason for you for you being who you are that's the reason why jesus came is your prosperity so i want you to think about that because if you practice holiness and there is no prosperity there is a problem with that holiness and if you have prosperity without effectively being obedient to God that is yielding to the Holy Ghost, then there will also be a problem. Lordship is his ability to say, this man or this woman is mine. You cannot touch him or her. This is mine. This belongs to me. Get your hand off this person. That's the meaning of it. 
what I have, I'll share with them. This is actually about Jesus. What he has is what what he has, we share in what he has. Therefore, I have the right to ask Jesus to share with me what he got. Get, get that. And then hosts his ability to have angelic and human forces working for your own profit. Please write that. Host. God being the Lord of hosts means his ability. He has human and angelic forces who are capable of working for your own profit and to his own glory. Look at this. It is until these three things are in place that you can enjoy a daily glory. You cannot enjoy a daily glory without having these three things. The holiness, the lordship, and the um, um, angelic and human favor. Angelic and human favor or angelic and human uh, 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 release of the blessing. The, the blessing being released through human beings. So I want you to really make good use of this. And how you make good use of it is by praying and asking God to bring it out for you. If, if there is something that you cannot do for yourself, ask God to help you do it. He will because you belong to him. That's why he's boss right there. The glory will come. The glory will come where these three things are practiced. Where human being desire and reaches out for it. Even if you have not completely gotten it, but you desire it and you go out for it. The holiness, the lordship, and the ability to attract through your interaction with God. The, your approach to God brings about the last one. He brings his host to your city. He brings his host to your life. That's what we should be asking God. Bring your lordship. Be my boss. Bring your holiness. I need it. And the three levels of holiness and the three levels of the anointing. And also, show up. So wherever these three things are working, God will show up. And in fact, wherever each of them is, the glory will show up anywhere. Because, I mean, I do not enjoy how some people actually divide these things into systematic arrangements. I believe these things... They intermingle. They are sometimes one and the same thing. They are one and the same thing working at the same time. So our job as human beings is we just try to divide it to make sense of it. <laughs> so that's what you have to know. You have to reach out to God and cry out to him so that he can show up. All we need is for God to show up. We need God to show up, but when God show up, uh, when God show up, don't go off. Please write this down. When God show up, don't go off. Because that is one of the most common mistakes that people are doing. When God show up, they move away, they move off. Let me share with you what the angels are doing during this, uh, during this first year of the seventh year. During the first year of the seventh year, I will explain this again when I will come back to, to minister about the Sabbath, about the year of the Sabbath. Because we have not yet talked about that side of the seventh year. We need to. So, Jeannie, uh, remind me, please. Remind me. Remind me. Remind me about that. Uh, if you're on the line tonight. Um, this is what I want to share with, um, with each of you. Um, I mean, if you are not Gigi, Gigi, you also take line. Wonderful, Gigi. Please, 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 beloved, uh, take take note of that. Remind me to teach on the Sabbath. I'm not talking of this the on I'm not talking about Saturday. I'm talking about the first year of the seven year cycle. It's called the Great Sabbath. So I I need to I need to I need to minister along this way along that line also. What the devil does during the first year 
what the devil does during this first year of a seventh year period is to persuade people to, is to persuade people to go back to their former ways of life that's number one number two he creates fear in the hearts of people that they cannot reach um, they cannot reach their goals so that they go back to a pattern after january people begin to go back to how they were in december that's what the devil does people have got the holy ghost is here the holy spirit is here thank you holy spirit lift up your hand and bless him the holy spirit is here bless him thank you holy spirit you are here thank you holy spirit you are here thank you holy spirit you are here thank you thank you you are here you showed up thank you for showing up tonight thank you thank you angels for showing up tonight thank you lord thank you lord in jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you holy spirit for showing up tonight amen amen see we have to be sensitive when the holy ghost shows up you have to be really sensitive i'm very sensitive about that i'm very sensitive about when angels show up i'm very sensitive about when the holy spirit shows up let me tell you something i have a budget for this year in fact i am also going to re represent it again to the throne the, the thing is they must do what i requested you might think that that is an insult to heaven but people of god let me tell you i am dealing with i am having relationship with the one who owns everything why should i not ask for something huge and let me tell you i'm working for him you are working for him you are living for him so why should he not orchestrate events on earth to favor you why should he not why, why should he not send his host out your job tonight is to pray and ask the lord almighty to send out his hosts human and angelic to bring you the job that we've been praying for to bring you to the new body path that you've been looking for to 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 put an end to certain to certain things going on in your life behavior patterns the holy spirit will convict you of things that you should let go things like that let's face it ask god to send out his host to minister to your different needs there are things that i want to change where i live in fact some few nights ago, I, I began to hear that things are gonna be really changed for me it's gonna be a different lifestyle in about a month or two for me very very different it's not gonna be boring no 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 that's why i'm trying to do the things when you know if god said to you go ahead and do this and finish it finish it so that he can move you into a different level so begin to ask god to send you hosts human and angelic to begin to 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 provide for you to begin to go out to bring it supernaturally now one of the things that the devil is doing he started doing it since 2018 since 2018 satan began to do this let me tell you satan prepares for years to come he does not just prepare for one year but years to come so he's been preparing for the year of the sabbath already i'm not giving him no credit i'm just letting you know how these things work so this is what i'm going to tell you one of the strong things the enemy does knowing that during the new seven year cycle is a year of preparation is is a year that you begin to invest he want to stop your he want to stop your job he want to stop your career he want to stop your benefits he want to stop your relationships he want to stop your marriage he want to stop your business he want to stop your your money and your job is to stop him 
Your job is to stop the Satan from stopping you. Please write that down. Your job is to stop Satan from stopping you. And when you stop him, he stops and he walks away. When I will talk more about the Sabbath, I will, I will release some of these secrets and mysteries to you so that you know. I'm going to put it in different ways for you to know. And also there will be tiredness. The first year of the Sabbath, there will be great, great, very big reluctance. Very big desire to stagnate. Very big desire to, to, to be tired. You, you constantly feel tiredness. But you are going to find things. The way to defeat some, some of those things is to find ways. Find things that motivate you. So that you can move forward. Now let me, let's pass that very, very quickly. Let's look at verse number four. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. When angels, when the seraphims speaks, when they extol God and worship God, the foundations of the earth are shaken. The foundations of the church, where, wherever God has an investment, it will shake. Not only that, wherever the enemies gathered will be shaken. So we need seraphim to speak again into our lives. We need the seraphim to speak again into our lives. To shake, to speak into our life about the holiness the lordship, the ownership, and the almightiness of God, God's ability to provide, to protect, to promote. That's the meaning of hosts. Ability for God to raise you up. Let them shout about his glory, about his holiness, about his lordship into your life. You need, let, let the voice of the seraphims penetrate into the earth into where you are and everything that believe that it cannot be shaken will be shaken and when when they speak when they shout when they extol the person of the lord holy 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 is the lord god of hosts okay heaven and the heaven is full of his glory they are in a sentence revealing the completeness of god Please write this down. Write this down for me. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 is the seraphims revealing the completeness of the person of God. And they are also revealing our completeness in God. Please write that down. They are revealing the completeness of God and our completeness in God. In fact, in this sentence, you are not supposed to lack anything. You are not supposed to be sick. Because when you begin to extol and to speak of how great God is, how holy God is, how mighty God is, how powerful God is, how rich God is, this one sentence in verse 3 speaks of his completeness. The completeness of God is what we are dealing with here. Seraphims are revealing the completeness of God and our completeness in God. But let me also share this with you. We also rely on the on the on the um, on the works. Let me put it that way, in a in a very simple way. We rely on what the seraphims and the cherubims what they do for us to 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 enjoy God better. Let me repeat it again. We rely on the works and activities of the seraphims in order to enjoy God better, to know him better and to enjoy him better. Please, some of you who, um, who except you find something in the Bible, you don't want to go along. There is a place where the Bible says that as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the, they are the, they are the children of God and so on also speaks of as many as have received Jesus, 
He gave them power to become the children of God, John 1, 12, etc. Revelation does not just come by the Holy Ghost. Now listen to me. For those of you who are Bible-oriented and centered, listen to me. I am Bible-oriented and centered. I believe the 66th book of the Bible completely. That is without fault. There's no palace in it. It's complete. If you follow the teaching of this book, if you follow his devotion, his constitution, you'll do well. You, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be a billionaire because you'll go to work. So listen, listen to what I'm listen to what I'm telling you. Listen to this. Listen to this very carefully. There is a place where God is going to bring you a revelation through an angel. I'm being very serious here. So a revelation is not just going to come through the written Bible or through the Holy Spirit, or through Jesus. But revelations will always come also through angels. The book of Revelation was Jesus dictating through an angel to John. Moses was given the Ten Commandments. Moses was given the Ten Commandments through an angel. So angels always mediate some of these things. So we need to begin to accept the works of the seraphims, their act and their works and their words. We need to. We need to begin to accept the works of the cherubims also. But here we are talking, we are we are ministering along the, the, the world of the seraphims. Whenever the seraphims show up and they begin to worship, worship is the work of the seraphim. Not that all angels and all entities and all people in heaven, they worship God. But the seraphims are for this kind of activities. They speak of the completeness of God. They sing of the completeness of God. They, they make poetry of it. Day in, day out, they chant His completeness. The secret of God is your ability to chant. I use the word chant as to speak out, to, to enjoy to 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 qualify him to define him to define his completeness look at what they do and do the same thing what did they say about god say the same thing and when they say it see what happens and when you begin to speak of god the way they speak what happened he says look at this verse 4 and the and the the posts of the door uh, the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke so when they speak power shows up when real angels speaks when they speak of the completeness of god his power his ability what happened? His holiness. Everything that has to do with the completeness of God. Where you are will shake. Now let me share something that happened today. I was sitting by in my little office here. And I was typing things out. Something just whispered to me and said there is going to be an earthquake. There is going to be an earthquake. And in a second, the entire building was shaken. This morning, See, God always is ahead of it, always preparing me. It was like I began to look at whether there is something that I keep in a place where it could fall off. And thank God everything was in place. I mean, I just hear, I was just typing, I heard there's going to be an earthquake. And in a second, the entire house was shaking. <laughs> so then it died down. And something was sharing something with me and said, you live in a faulty in a faulty eight zone. Something was sharing that with me today. And I'm, 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 I'm like beginning to ask God, should I stay here or should I move forward? <laughs> I began to say, what are you revealing to me? Should I move? And when? Or should I stay here? 
one day I was talking to, I think it was Marie or somebody, we were just talking on something and the entire house began to shake. Another time, I said, praise the Lord and every bench began to shake. <sighs> Let me tell you what this reveals. Because today, I just want to finish with the seraphim today. Because tomorrow we have death cancellation, tomorrow and Saturday. We have services of death cancellation on um, Friday, that's tomorrow, and on Saturday. Six and seven, I think so. We do. So listen carefully. When you begin to speak of God, sing of God, worship Him completely, without keeping nothing back. Don't worry about your weaknesses. Take it to Him and let Him deal with it. But what I want you to know is this. Listen to this. What I want you to know is this. When you begin to speak of God's completeness, He's going to shake the foundation of the earth. Many of you complain about your problem. I mean, with me, you can complain. But outside me and God, don't. Don't with other human beings. Your job is not to complain about your problems. Your job is to get rid of it. Don't give energy to whatever has happened in your life. Don't give energy to it. Avoid giving energy to any problem. Instead, speak of what is going to happen to the problem. If you have a bank account and there is no money in it, tonight you are going to speak to that bank account that is going to be filled. If there is something that you've been trying to do, and uh, there is something in you that is trying to stop you, you're going to speak to that thing and say, get out of my way if I cross you. I carry with me Holy Ghost fire. I'm going to cross you. Until you speak to a problem, what you are going to do to it, it will not leave you. And then when you speak to it about what you're going to do to it, then you begin to speak of the completeness of God. Not talk to God about the problem. You now begin to speak you, you problem, I bring the holiness of God. Father, I bless you. Lord, you are holy. You begin to talk to God about his holiness. You begin to talk to God. You see, the angels were not talking about how tired they are doing the same job day in the house. They love what they are doing. They enjoy it. So, so listen to this. When you begin to speak of the completeness of God, there is going to be a shaking. Even people who didn't want to do what they should do for you, God will remove them. Because when once you put a smile on God's face, God going to go crazily in love with you. I'm serious. He's going to fight for you without you even trying to talk about the problem. That's how this thing goes. Your problem will be shaken and it will not be able to stand the glory that will be revealed. When you begin to speak of how, stop sometime. I, I wish that sometime you can just stop worrying about your problem and begin to worry about God. If you will begin to worry about God, your problem will be solved. I'm serious. Begin to worry about God and see how your problem will be solved. Begin to speak of how great he is. Stop talking about the problems you are having. Start talking about him, who he is, how he is, his completeness, his holiness, his power, his protection, his ability to bring the right people, angels, to come and work for you. That's what you should be talking about. Talk about what his word says about him. And that's how problems are solved. That's how wealth are created. I mean, a different way, because wealth is always created based on your utilization and release and ability to put your gift into the market. That's all. If you cannot put your gift into the market, you're not going to become wealthy. You're only going to be a thousandaire. You're not going to be a millionaire. I'm serious. Because being a millionaire and a billionaire is bound with investment of your person. 
and of your gift. That's where it lies on. So if you are not going to invest your money or yourself into something meaningful, you're not going to be a millionaire. I mean, sometimes miracles do happen, but it's rare because the blessing is tied down to your gift. Please write that down. The blessing is tied down to your gift and your ability to invest the gift. So if you cannot invest your money into, say, a ministry like us, you cannot invest your tithe and offering to a ministry like us, how do you think that you'll ever be rich? If you cannot stay in a job and retire in a very good way over the years, then there's a problem. And they take that retirement and put it aside into a good investment. Or if you don't know, just put it in a savings account. Until you find something you are convinced of, you see other people prosper from it, then you go. It must be long term. God wants the voice of the angel to be heard again in your city, in your family, in your life, in your sleep. It's not the voice of demon that we should be seeing in your dreams. We must hear the voice of the angels in your dream. The voice of the seraphim need to be heard in the churches. It need to be heard in the ministries. And your voice is going to be heard. Because what the seraphims are doing here is showing you how they move God. How they make the glory come to the earth. You make the glory come to the earth. Please write that down. You make the glory come to the earth by extolling the completeness of God. Extolling the completeness of God brings the glory down. And when one such a glory comes down, your problem doesn't bring the glory down. That's the problem. Please write that down. Your problem does not bring the glory down. That's the problem. Your worries doesn't bring the glory down. That's the worry. Your headache does not bring the glory down. That's the headache. Your crying does not bring the glory down. It doesn't. It all goes back to faith in one way or the other. The post of the doors, the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Just one person spoke and the glory came down and everywhere was shaken. People of God, you need to sing and worship and talk about the greatness of God, his completeness. The completeness of God. And let it make whatever was worrying you to flee. That's the meaning of being shaken. Whatever thing that it cannot be shaken will be shaken. When you begin to, to release the completeness of God. Please write that down. Whatever thing it cannot be shaken will be shaken. When you begin to release the completeness of God. Remember that the, the, you see it talks about the whole earth is filled with his glory. That glory, the glory that the earth receives. Let me share it now with you guys. The glory that the earth receives manifests from the release of the seraphims. When the seraphims speaks of the completeness of God, the glory is released. God will release to you when you speak of him. When you speak of his greatness, of his, let me use the word, of his completeness. You guys are learning a new word tonight. Completeness. When you, when you minister to God about his completeness, the glory will show up to do things for you without you knowing it. That's why the morning that I wake up singing, I know that I have a major breakthrough, a major miracle. There's no two ways about it. I've learned that over the years. 
But once I'm sitting and something begins to sing inside me and sing and doesn't want to stop, then you know that there is a major breakout. There's something happening. God is doing something for somebody or for me. And before that day is over, the miracle testimony will come. And then the house was filled with smoke. The house was filled with smoke. And whenever the presence of God shows up, smoke arises. That smoke, when you hear about smoke, okay, if a house is on fire and every way is on smoke, can you stay? Can you stand it? Will you not run? Can you breathe? Yes. You cannot. The same thing, that is why his glory is heavy and weighty. You still breathe, but you won't be able sometimes to stand. Sometimes when it hits you, it will take weeks for you to recover, or months or years. Lord, I want you to hit me with this kind of, of shaking and smoke. We are not talking here of the smoke of tobacco, or the smoke of marijuana, or the smoke of other things. We are talking of the smoke from the glory. Because there will be fire. Wherever God show up, wherever the glory show up, there will be cloud. There will be fire. There will be cloud. There will be fire. There will be smoke. That tells you you are dealing with a different being entirely. Please, I want you to begin to seek this kind of this kind of thing. This is what you should be looking for because this is what solved the problem. It's not what we are thinking of. This is what really solved the problem. It's a common thing. And when the smoke comes, you cannot minister. There are ministers who want to continue to talk. Even when God shows up, instead of them shutting up and get away and let God do his business, they still want to show up. They still want to talk. What are you going to talk? When God show up, give up. Please write that down. When God shows up, give up. Don't try to talk. Don't try to tell him anything. Don't try to show the people that you carry his power and his glory. It's not needed at that time because you don't have none. Your gift is not needed. In as much as I need the gift of the anointing to operate, I would rather that the glory show up so that I don't I, I keep my reserve. You guys are getting what I'm saying? When God show up, you you reserve your gift, you keep your gift. You don't need your gift when God shows up. Because He is doing the thing for Himself. And that's where I have problem with many pastors. When God show up, you don't need to start touching people. People are automatically going to start to fall by themselves. People of God, let me share a testimony with you. I went to, I went to a bank yesterday. And I, I, I went and blessed my, my bank manager. I mean, it's one of the, uh, one of the banks. And I, I put something on the envelope to, to bless the bank manager. She's been working very well with me. And um, and immediately I, I, I gave her the envelope. She she began to fall under the anointing. I didn't say anything. I just handed the envelope to her and I waved at her. Just waving, she, she was on. I mean, people were rushing to hold her. <laughs> Interesting. I said, I see how this year is going to be. I didn't say anything. I didn't do anything. I just handed the white envelope to her. And that's it. The power came. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the power just came. She was falling. I said, oh, God, I don't even need to do anything. I don't even need to pray. Just needs to bless people and the power comes. <laughs> Give people money. <laughs> Say good words to people. Be nice to people. Be kind to people. And the power comes. Boom, boom, boom. And so God does his own problem. Oh, there are people that I do not want them to touch me. Don't touch my head. 
I don't need no satanic anointing upon me. I want while I'm ministering, let God go and touch people. So that people do not say that I carry I carry some strange powers. Let the thing work. Let, let God work for himself. That's the real thing. That's what the seraphims are revealing. That when you when you speak of the the, the, the completeness of God, the power shows up and begins to work for himself. At that point, your anointing is not needed. Put your anointing in your pocket. We don't need it. Let God do his business for himself. You cannot do God's business the way it should be done. Let God do it. Wherever you see the smoke, it means give up. Just like when there is a smoke in the house, you run out. Because you don't want to die. Of carbon monoxide and or whatever. You don't want to die. You flee to go and have some oxygen. When God show up with his own kind of atmosphere, that's why the glory, the cloud, the fire, the smoke is an atmosphere of his own. Give up. When God shows up, give up. Just give up your own everything and, and enter in and stay there. Let him nurture you. Wow. I love this. I love the seraphims. They bring the fire. Look at verse number five. Then said I, ah, it's after Isaiah have seen this and come under this. That conviction came upon him. Because when the seraphims begin to speak, when they begin to speak into your life, people of God, I'm saying this to you so as to prepare you. Because a time is coming in your life that an angel is going to show up in your life. That's, that's why I'm saying all this tonight. A time is coming that an angel is going to show up in your life and bring you a revelation. If you are willing to do things God's way, your angel will always talk to you. My angel always talks to me when it's necessary, not all the time. And when he talks to me, the entire place is heavy. I mean, I have, I have had my angels spoke to me from, say, uh, is it 10 o'clock in the night till like 7 in the morning? It looked like it was just like five seconds. I didn't know that it was already, I mean, the a whole time was, was zapped or, or zipped, like a zip file. And I thought it was just something of an hour, let me go to bed then and sleep. And I look at the clock, it's past seven in the, in the morning. A time is coming in your life that these beings are going to show up. They're going to show up. The time is coming that the glory, if you can do what they are doing, if you can, if you can speak of God's completeness like they do, time is coming that you're going to be connected with them. They will be connected with you. And the cloud will show up as shaken will happen so that you don't need to talk about what the devil is doing against you. Because you'll be the, the power of God that shows up will be dealing with the devil and not you dealing with him. And of course, the devil will tell all his hosts to, for the, for the sake of their life, if they want to leave, then let them not go near you. Because something about you will begin to do something disastrous to them, even without you knowing it. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Something of God that you are not even aware of will, will be dealing while you are sleeping. Something will be shooting out of your belly and shooting some people. That's when, when some people who have eyes to see from the other side see this. Uh, let's give this person. This person is something about him that is dangerous. It's going to kill people. That person carries the power of God. They know those who carry the power. Look at verse number five. I look at verse number five. You see, when the glory, the cloud, the smoke show up, the shaking happen, God will convict you of something. 
that you need to be convinced of, that you need to give up. And it will just happen. Now let's see how this thing happened. Then said I, this is Isaiah speaking, Woe is me. Now he sees himself as somebody who is cursed. Woe is me, for I am um, I am undone. He's finished. He said, oh, I'm finished. Because I am a man of unclean lips. He now saw himself as somebody who has unclean lips. He speaks, he speaks ghetto. Saw himself as someone that speaks ghetto. Ghetto is for any color. Any color fits into, into ghetto. Please. Any anybody, there is, there, is, there is what we call a ghetto mindset of humanity, no matter their culture and their color. He saw himself as somebody who speaks this way. I mean, this, I mean, he has seen enough in life. Moses had this kind of problem. I'm a man of unclean lips. Which means sometimes he say things that he shouldn't say. And why? Because he dwell in the midst, he dwell in the midst of our people upon clean lips. People of God, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Your culture is going to affect you. The territory that you live is going to affect you. Because he lived among people upon clean lips, that's why he began to behave that way. That's why when you move to a place, make sure you conquer the spirit of that territory. So that you do not come under his influence. Go to a place. If you are not powerful enough, the territorial spirit there will begin to influence you. You begin to move like everybody. Look at this. For mine eyes have seen the king, the lord of hosts. See how Isaiah described him? I've seen he's a king. And he is the Lord of hosts. See, he's now speaking like the seraphims. The seraphims now are affecting him. He's no longer being affected by his culture and by where he lives, by his by territorial spirit around him. He has now begun to speak like the seraphims. My eyes have seen the king. He's now convinced of what his problem was. Why God couldn't use him in his fullness, or why there were still things that God has to deal with in his life. And it was dealing with the problem of how the words he is releasing is not, it doesn't carry fire power. Because there's something in him that still needs to be bent and killed. That, that has been affected by the territory and culture in which he existed. People of God, there is something in us that is going to be bent. And I see why God is delaying us from moving from Isaiah chapter 6. People of God, let me tell you the truth. It's something God want to deal with in our lives, including mine. The three things, there are three things God want to deal with before we can move forward. His holiness, His Lordship, and our ability to see Him as a Lord of hosts. Until we can, we can, we can, He can deal with these three things in our life, God is not going to move us forward from now on. The Holy Spirit re revealed this to me this evening, and I, I, and I told Him, I'm going to yield everything so that you can move me forward and you can move the church forward because i'm sent to, to 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 really be a voice in the modern church i'm serious i'm sent to be a strong voice and a strong actor in the world of today i am i know it but the three levels of holiness and anointing his lordship and his ability to command a host to work for us, to work for me and you, both angelic and human. We have to understand and be convinced about that. And when we see God's glory, then whatever is done in our life has to be dealt with. He will point it out to us and it will be dealt with and everything will stop. Isaiah, it was unclean lips. Unclean lips go beyond what he was saying, also how he was thinking and reasoning. He has seen the king. He now begin to he now begin to address God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the king and owner, who also is a master of a host of beings. 
He began to see God that way. And until you begin to see God as king, until God reveals who you are to you, that's number one. Number two, until you come under his conviction and he deals with you, you won't be able to accept God as king, as ruler. You will still be trying to rule yourself. Others will still be trying to rule you. Devil will still be trying to rule you. You have to accept him as the Lord of hosts and as a king. He did not say leader. No. You must see God as king. And you must see him as Lord of hosts. If you cannot see God in these two aspects, you are going nowhere. You will be stagnant for a long time. King means he has everything that you need. He governs, he rules, he guides and all of that. Host, he has the right angels and the right human being to minister to your need. Isaiah began to see God these two ways and things are going to change. Number two, he also began to see himself what were the witnesses in his life that had to be dealt with for him to move forward. I am happy that God is also sharing this with me. Now let's look at number six. Then, then flew one of the seraphims unto me. You see, when you begin to see God this way, king and the one who has the host, and you also begin to hear the voice of the seraphim, you need to hear the voice of the seraphims. Because until you hear the voices of angels, you won't be convinced about certain things about God. You need to see angels. Please, ask God to send you angels. So that you will stop worrying about life. Please. If you have a husband, tell God that when the angel come, let it be when your husband is around. If you are a man, you are married, tell him when the angels is coming, let it be when my wife is there and my children so that they can see. And not just you alone. When you try to tell them, they say you are lying. They didn't see anything. And I want when they come, let the power of God shake where you live. I want the house to be shaken. So that every gods and goddesses you didn't know existed in your house will flee for their life and never return back again. I'm serious. Because there are some sneaky things about human beings. Sneaky things sneaking in here and there. In our homes. We don't even know sometimes. Except God give revelation. God, I pray that you release the glory of the seraphims. What they are releasing, the glory they are releasing shall come to us. I'm praying that you release angels to come to us to bring us revelation. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, that is, that is Isaiah, having a live coal in his hand. See, he carried in his hand a live coal, a charcoal. Coal. So coal is not just found here on earth. There is coal in there. There is fire up there. I want you to know that. Which he had taken with the uh, which he had taken with the uh, with the tongues from off the altar. So there is an altar. Listen to this. There is an altar. And he went to the altar. And he had a tongue in his hand, and he took a burning coal of fire, a burning coal. The seraphims are called those that release the glory by fire. They release the glory by fire. How? Because they are surrounded by fire. Fire depicts God's power and also glory and decoration. Authority, might, all kind of stuff. He flew to Isaiah until you see what Isaiah saw. Then the angels will be sent to you. Until you are willing to begin to minister to God about his completeness, the angels will not come. Angels are going to come to where people are convinced about God and what God is capable of doing. Next, angels are going to show up 
when you are willing to put your gift and talent to work. Please, I'm begging most of you not to resign from your job because the first year of the Smita is always a dangerous time to resign from one job. Let me share with you guys this. I have told Gigi or Geneva to write this down for me to, to minister about the first year of the Sabbath. Getting married during the first year of the Sabbath, of the, of the first year of the, of the, of the seventh Sabbath, that is seven year cycle. Getting married, um, uh, what is it? Um, resigning from your job and retiring from your job, except, except it hit the right year. It's not a good time. It's not a good time. Please, 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 it's not a good time. I always tell people, there are certain decisions you should not make at the first year of the beginning of a seven-year cycle. There are certain decisions you should not make. For example, don't leave your job during that first one year. The reason is because there is a reassignment, a reshuffling. There's a territorial war going on. There are two warfare happening at the same time. Judgment and blessing is happening at the same time. And God, if you have a job, God is coming to your job to visit you. And when he comes there and you've already gone, there will be a problem. I'm, I'm serious. They will be calling your name and they will not hear your name. And God will say, where is he? Because that is also the year that the devil wants to use the job situation to hurt you. I'm serious. That is also the year that the devil wants to use a relationship to hurt you. So you have to be very, very careful. I've learned this over and over again. And look at this. And when the seraphim flew with a burning coal in his hand, look at what he did in verse 7. And he laid it upon my mouth. The seraphims are going to bring the burning coal and they are going to lay it where the problem is. Tonight, you are going to tell Jesus, wherever the problem of my life is, I am willing that the seraphims lay the burning coal, the burning coal of fire on that spot and get rid of it. You're going to pray that prayer tonight. The Bible says that Jesus is the one that baptizes with fire. You're going to ask Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the seraphims to come with the fire and apply the fire where the problem is in your life, in your business, in your family, anywhere. Tell them that you are willing that let them bring the fire. Tell God you are willing that the fire be brought into your life tonight. Let me tell you, he laid it upon my mouth. He said, say he, the Holy Ghost revealed to him that he was a man of unclean lips. If God reveals to you that you cannot control your temper, you cannot control your emotion, you cannot control your money, you cannot control the this, this, that, 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 you find yourself easily, easily um, procrastinating, all kind of stuff, confused, and so on, tell him to send the seraphim. Or tell Jesus himself, he's the baptizer with fire. Tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost fire, to come. And let the fire come to the right spot and hit it. Bam! And everything will be done with. He laid it on my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken, thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Okay, what's the difference between iniquity and sin? Okay, what Isaiah was dealing with here was. Territorial, territorial iniquity that has attracted demonic principalities or fallen angelic principalities is what he was dealing with. He was also dealing with Baal. Baal is the, is the chief spirit of iniquity. Please listen. Sin is what you make happen or happens to you. But iniquity is what is forced upon you. Upon a whole territory, upon a whole culture, that is iniquity. That's why it is passed. It is iniquity that is passed as sin.
from generation to generation and the chief architect of iniquity that control cultures in bear. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. So Isaiah, in spite of the fact that he was a prophet of God, was still dealing with some generational, territorial, cultural, national iniquity. For example, rebelliousness is a major iniquity. Isaiah was still dealing with this issue. So if Isaiah was dealing with it, who are you? You need the seraphim to lay the fire on where the problem is. Let them lay it on where the problem is. If not, you'll be struggling with the same old mess in every seven years. This is a seven years that God is giving us an opportunity for the fire to be laid on us and for the problem to be removed once and for all. And I am willing, Jesus, I am willing tonight that you lay the fire on me and get rid of whatever the problem is. Whatever. You see, iniquity is something that you've tried to stop. So many of you are confused about this. So let me explain tonight the difference between iniquity and sin. You see, a sin that is persistent in your family, a problem that is persistent in your family, this one died, this one died of cancer, this one died of cancer, this one died of cancer, sexual sin, immorality is rampant, idol worship is rampant, struggling with poverty is rampant, struggling with bad dreams is rampant, struggling with uh, evil covenant and curses and ties is rampant. When you see those things, it has nothing to do with personal sin, it has to do with iniquity. Remember what David says, he says, in iniquity did my father conceive me, did my mother conceive me, my mother conceived me. My parents brought me into this world and I already inherited iniquity. Iniquity is sin by inheritance. Please write that down. Iniquity is sin by inheritance. Those are things that are forced upon us to do things against our will. These are powerful stuff I'm talking to you about. That's what many of you are dealing with. You think you are dealing with your own personal witness. No, you are dealing with an inherited sin. Father delayed to do things. Mother delayed to do things. Delayed to build a house. Delayed to marry. Delayed to have children. Delayed to go to school. Delayed to do this. Unwilling to do this. Those are, those are things that are forced upon you so that you are unwilling even when you will have been willing to do something, there is a force in the atmosphere. There is a force from the water. There is a force from the second heaven that is saying, no, you must go the way of the family. You must go the way of, of uh, the culture. That's why, that's why even if a child of a Muslim family, listen carefully, was born in Canada, America, or, or, or Netherlands, Holland, Switzerland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Italy, they are of, of, of Islamic heritage. It's running in the system. That's why when they hear of a jihad, they are willing to leave the West to go and fight. Why? The iniquity things is running. And will excite them. It will be awakened. When you beat the right drum. What is in you will be awakened. Please write that down. When the right drum. Is sounded. What is inherited. In you will rise up. It will show up. That's why you see the young people are going to fight. Because the thing is there. Until the iniquity thing is broken. They will not stop going. They will not stop going. That's why you see a young boy grew up from a very good mother, a good, very good father. And goes off to, to, to college or goes off to high school or something and begin to do drugs. And you go back, you look at the family line, you see they have been, they have been great fornicators, great drug dealers, great this, great that. And then they drop out of school. When you go back, you see there were people who dropped out so many in the family line. It comes back. 
the ghost always come back until somebody tell the ghost not to come back please write this down ghosts always try to come back somebody has to tell the ghost to stay back write that down somebody must tell the ghost to stay back and to stay off to back off and not to come back it must be a human being that put a stop to it see the angels are preaching the gospel look at this look at this told him that his iniquity is taken away you see iniquity is taken away it's not talking about sin sin is purged okay listen to this what is the difference between purged and um and taken away what is the difference taken away means forcefully removed forcefully removed poverty spirit is not a prayer meeting it must be for forcefully removed so iniquity sin are not something you pray out of is something that is forcefully removed it's a war thing angels can do that the holy ghost can do that a big annoying thing followed by glory can do that so cultural sin territorial sin national sin racial sin that is affecting somebody can only be taken away when they are taken away the problem goes away forever while personal sin is pushed personal sin is pushed but iniquity is forcefully removed break it's like breaking into a house and taking you out and said now you're free because you see iniquity forces you to do what you don't want to do sin, sin makes you to enjoy some pleasures and you are still reasoning and you give it up and you can you can have the power to say no but iniquity you have no power to say no i'm serious so you guys are learning the difference between iniquity and sin tonight and angels are telling us the difference accepting jesus as lord and savior removes our sins write our name in the book of life but for iniquity to be taken away the blood must be applied deliverance must be done the fire must be applied in fact this is what takes away iniquity cultural territorial family dna secret mysteries things that you find yourself going back to when you are unwilling to do it you know it's wrong it's iniquity what it needs is the fire fire must be applied to it so the seraphim has to apply the fire tonight hallelujah hallelujah oh and it is when that happened that you can hear verse 8 and i heard the voice of the lord saying it is until iniquity is forcefully removed like a, something is cut up like a surgery is performed iniquity has to do with surgery is performed okay sin has to do with appeal or a shot is given iniquity must be cut out with a knife let me explain the difference iniquity must be cut off with a knife but sin can be dealt with a shot or appeal that's that's the that's the example i can give you that's why it's not every pastor who is capable of dealing with iniquity very few can deal with it very very few can deal with it because it has to do with the higher stuff higher stuff let me tell you the legality in the atmosphere is enormous many of you have no idea legality in the atmosphere is big and let me tell you lucifer goes to the presence of the lord he appears in the meeting of the sun that's all i can say has done a part of to tell god that this is the reason why could, could, do you guys know that even or even when even when moses was being buried lucifer came to come and say that moses belonged to him 
I'm serious. He came to say that Moses belonged to him. And Michael has to fight him off and say, get out of here. The Lord rebukes you. Because he still brings the paperwork to come and claim that, look, this man had iniquity. I'm serious. This has opened my eye to begin to see things completely different. And that is why the same cycle runs in people, in family, in their children. Why? Because they are dealing with iniquity. They are not dealing with sin. The blood deals with sin. But with iniquity, you need the Holy Ghost. You need fire. You need the fire of the seraphims. We need it tonight, people of God. And it is until, until the scalpel, the knife is applied and something is cut off. Somebody is removed. Something is cut off. Something is dealt with powerfully. Then you can hear the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then you can now answer the call. Then said I, listen to this. Here am I, send me. See, we are done with tonight. I have learned a lot. Let me tell you something. Only learners will win. Only those who are willing to learn this kind of thing are going to be delivered. They are the ones who are going to be delivered. Lift up your hand tonight and begin to pray and ask God to deal with iniquity. To deal with inherited iniquity and to apply the fire. Tell him to send the seraphim to apply the fire to you. Tell Jesus to baptize you with fire because you need fire. Fire baptism. You need, you need, you need fire to be applied to any part of your life where the problem is. Tell him you're willing that let the fire come. Tell him that you're willing for the fire to come. I need the fire, Lord. Many of you think that you are dealing with sin. You do not know that you are dealing with iniquity. Father, deliver me from iniquity. Deliver me from all forms of iniquity. Deliver me from all forms of iniquity. Excuse me. Deliver your people from all forms of iniquity, O oh God, tonight. Shake your bowl. Shake your bowl. Shake, 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 shake. Shake with the voice of the seraphims. Shake whatever has been holding me down. Shake whatever has been holding your people down. Shake whatever is holding this person watching down. Shake, 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 shake. Apply the fire. Apply the fire to where the problem is. We are willing. Lord, apply the fire and burn. Burn the thing to death and let it go. In Jesus' name.
we have been led astray here and there. And the real issue is inequity. Inherited sin. Covenanted sin. Tied of sin. Territorial sin. Cultural sin. National sin. Lamba kunde serie. Lokunde pusanto kuyende. Lebo kondumbre atakasate. Lokando boso kuyende brato. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. I'm going to have a separate video, a short video that I will be doing. Separate video that I will be producing on the anointing, the anointing, the anointing oil, on the difference between iniquity and sin. Please, the person who is keeping the record tonight, please write those things down. I have to do videos on the anointing, on the anointing oil. On holy fire. On holy fire. We need it. On the difference between iniquity and sin. So that people know what they are dealing with. We are not just dealing with the problem of sin. We are dealing with the problem of iniquity. And iniquity is something that has to be cut off with a knife. Surgery. Because it has deep root. Come from the inside comes from the inside and is shooting out all of us. That's, that's, that's what is stopping a lot of people. So tonight you've heard the word. Father has released the word to your people. Reward your people for faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of the living God. And reward me tonight too. And Father, remember all of the seed your people have planted. To place your people. And to reward your people from the house of inheritance. The royal house of inheritance of Jesus that you showed me. People of God, the Almighty showed me that there is a royal house of Jesus. And I belong to it. You never, you never the administrator remind me we have to discuss this. There are certain houses that have been shown in heaven. We need to discuss it. Then we'll bring it out. We need to bring it out to be open to the people. I want you to take note. That's why I said that. I used to think that God, the, the Father and God, the Son, they all have some joint something. I didn't know where you have the imperial library. Then you have the library of the king. You have the imperial bank, you have the bank of the king. You have the, the, the royal treasure house, then you have the, the, the house of inheritance, that's of Jesus. And Jesus has it for us. And people of God, we must have it. There's no two ways out. We must have it. Nothing is going to take us out of this earth. Until we've enjoyed life to the fullest. I want. Th there are some peculiar people that I want to follow. My lifestyle and my style of ministry. Please if you feel called. And you are attracted. To my kind of lifestyle. Hang with. Stay with me. Roll with me. Roll with me. I'm serious. If you feel called. And attracted to my way of life. Stay with me. Whether you are staying with me as a friend, whether you are staying with me as a partner in ministry, whether you are staying with me, I am your bishop if you are a pastor, or I am your pastor if you are just a member, or if you are seeking prophetic insight into your future. Please, please remind me to do a work on what I have there on Miracles Today. I need to do a special work on, and we want to talk about my prophetic ministry to the world. People of God, if you have a man or a woman in your life and you do not know what the outcome of such a relationship or romance or marriage, the end, how the end is going to be like, call me. I will look into it for you. 
The phone number that you call is 702-992-0792. It's a paid phone line. It's a private consultation phone line. That's what it is. If you want to find a husband, you want to find a wife, you call that line. 702-992-0792. It's paid. I'm going to, that's when I bring out what is inside my belly. I'm looking to it. <laughs> You'll be talking to me and I will be seeing many things. It's not free. That, that's your calling me as a prophet. That phone is my office as a prophet. God said that I should design a phone line just for the prophetic ministry. That's what that phone line is for. You can call the office line 316-665-4400 or 316-243-2967. That's when I minister to general need. But if you need private consultation, you want me to look into, uh, you want a husband, you want a wife, you want children, you want money, you want me, you want God through me to make you rich. You want protection from accident from wicked people. You want to know your future. That's the number you call. It's a paid thing. It's not free. And whatever I tell you, you take it very seriously. It's not astrology. This is the Holy Ghost at work. I'm, I'm, I'm just his vehicle. He calls me his handyman. I'm his handyman. I'm his waiter. He cooks the food. He gives me to serve the people. He pours the wine. He gives me to serve. That's what I am. That's why most of what I do today, I went back to look at my old videos and listen to uh, the old MP3 that I started doing. I couldn't believe that was me. I was shocked when I was looking at myself. I said, really? Boy, what's going on with you, man? <laughs> you've changed. I was just telling myself, you've changed. And uh, some, some of you were complaining that I do not pray the way I used to pray before. I shout, I come with power shaking. It's because I moved from a house to an apartment. So that I, I live near the kind of area that is healthy for, for my physical body. The kind of area that I love to live do not have single home for me to, to live as of the time I move in here. But I found this place. So I cannot be doing that and disturb the neighbors here. I mean, every one of them knows that I'm a prophet here. They respect me. They protect the integrity of this place. They know me, all of them. And they give me very high honor in this place. Especially the owners of this place. They take care of this place for me. Even when I'm not around and something breaks down, they open, they come in, they fix things. They tell the guy who are fixing, make sure you take care of the things of the pastor. I'm serious. I didn't even know that they knew I was the pastor. It was when I traveled that Bill came in here to come and fix something. I wasn't in. I came back, Bill said, so, so you are a pastor? I said, yes. He said, ah, I now understand why I told, uh, I told you some so person not to give you that bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I said, bring it on. <laughs> yeah. You are trying to deny me some good stuff? He started laughing. And we, we started just, just a joke. They know. They can sniff you out before you know that they know you. They know you. Yeah, they do. They know you. I mean, even the geese, even the geese and the dogs, by the by the bridge across the street since it is too it is too cold and i'm busy walking so i cannot go i have not had time to go out there and feed them i open the, the i open the door here and get out by the balcony and i see them downstairs waiting for me the geese are downstairs they are waiting and what has happened because i'm not going there how did they know that i live here and now they are camping by the tree down there the geese are camping right here. They are no longer staying in the water. 
Because they waited, they didn't see me, so they now they able to sniff me out. In fact, there is one geese that is so huge. I don't, I don't believe that that geese can fly. It's huge. And I saw it walking towards me like, hey, dude, where have you been? Bring the food. We are waiting down there for you. <laughs> and I got and I got their, their, I got their food and went downstairs and feed them. They've not, they've not left this place for the past one week. They are here. They are downstairs. They are all camping out here. The same way the guy Mary is, that's the safest place. We don't want to go somewhere where somebody will, will go and end up being food in somebody's cooking pot. We are not going. They are smart. If geese are hanging down here, they are camping down here, then you should be hanging with me. <laughs> you should be rolling with me. <laughs> so why you don't see me make too much noise and all that prayers I will pray throughout the night and shed the dark places because I now live in a place like this that is really well structured. Along the way, I'm going to ask people to begin to contribute for housing, for the ministry. And then you can now see, and also when I come to your city to come and minister, that will be different. That will be very different. That's going to be different. It's the same power, but I have to control things. I have to allow my neighbors to sleep. And so on. That's why sometimes I take a walk. And I'm praying while I'm walking. Yeah. There was once I was taking a walk, so I was just, uh, I was just speaking to myself, and just you can see my mouth move. You know, you never know whether somebody is talking on their cell phone or not. And uh, I reached somewhere, and I felt the spirit of God ask me to prophesy over that city. So I removed my cell phone. I removed my cell phone from where it is in the distance. And, and I turn it, and I, I, I be able, like I'm turning it on, then I put it near my ear, and I began to speak. Hello, I speak, I prophesy over this place. So those who are passing by think that I'm talking on the phone, they didn't know that I'm prophesying over the, over the place. <laughs> Interesting, yep. I like most the one that I will put, uh, Geneva taught me how to do that one out of this. Something I will stick to it and put it over, and you will not. You will think I'm talking to somebody, and I'm talking to Jesus. Hello, Jesus. How are you? Hey, see some small, small thing. You don't want people to begin to think that uh, you're crazy and you're going nuts, and they call the, the the emergency something and say somebody's nuts walking through the street. So you you have to control certain things. Yeah, people of God. Please make good use of what we have on our website. Please try and go to my website, www.thekaimeriministry.com. Also, when you go to YouTube to watch the videos, please try and leave some comments. And also, when you go to the Kai Mary Ministry Facebook, I have two Facebook. One was when I didn't really know much about Facebook. I needed to talk to my mom and my little boss. So I have the Kai Mary. And so when the ministry started, uh, uh, in its fullness, I just have to leave it so people started contacting me there. Then later, the Dikai Mary uh, Ministry Facebook now came up. Please go to the Dikai Mary Ministry and, and say you like us, something like that. Say you like us, go to Twitter and say you like us and all those places where we are, Pinterest and all of that. Because sometimes people see and say, oh, why is it that I'm not telling my partners to go there and uh, put in something? Go to Google Plus, dude. And uh, I'm putting some good words. Let people know. And also, if you received a miracle, if God has visited you through our ministry, send me an email or write me a letter so that I won't put your name or your city. I want to put it on a testify. By tomorrow morning, there will be a column that will appear on the website that says testify. I want to begin to put in the miracle that has happened. There are so many miracles. I want to begin to, 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 to catalog them on testify please send me if you have received miracles of money if i've told you things that the, the holy spirit spoke through me and they happen things like that or you you went to the video and prayed over them and you receive miracles please send me testimonies so that i can archive them on the website and so on thank you very much and remember this whatever a human being cannot do for you God is willing to do it for you. 
and God is willing to send angels and humans to do it for you. Remember that tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, we are going to have an explosive service. An explosive service, what I'm going to be ministering has already been given to me. So please come, we are doing the cancellation of debts. I pray tonight that I will have the, uh, the, the grace and the opportunity to put a little video there about tomorrow's service, about debt cancellation. God is interested in canceling your debt. Since he canceled the debt of Lisa, of Missouri, he will cancel your debt. Since he canceled the debt of Nicole, Nicole was, it was owing so much student loan. I prayed for her on a Friday. On a Saturday, she got a letter. The debt was cancelled. And they also sent her back a check. So, so since God did that for somebody, believe me, God will be able, and God is able, to cancel the debt you owe on your house, on a car, on something, whatever it is. To them loan, he can wipe it clean. He can cross it out. That's what we'll be dealing with tomorrow. We'll be dealing with that tomorrow. Um, Christine, are you on the line tonight? Who is that? Who is that? Okay, let's continue. Christine, are you on the line tonight? I wanted to make some announcement concerning what she's doing, but it doesn't sound like she's there. So let's leave it alone. Also, I want you guys, please, to pray for the administrator of the ministry. Please pray that God give us strength. I, I was looking at what she had been doing, and I know it could really wear somebody. It's a lot of work. It could really wear someone down. Please pray for God to fill her with power. So that she could keep this thing going. She's the only one who is really doing something big with me. Also remember to pray for Beverly. For her shoulder to be healed quickly. Remember to pray for Lisa. For her job. And for her to win her lawsuits. Remember to pray for the grandbaby of girl. Remember to pray. Remember to pray for Dorothy, for her to be healed, and for her family to be completely saved. Remember to pray for the financial situations of each and every one of you. Please, I will be telling you people to pray for as we meet on a daily basis. And remember every Wednesday, I will have a healing service on Wednesday afternoon. I am, I am yet to, to complete that task with, uh, with the administrator to know when that is to take place. When this mainly, I want to return it back. While I'm, I'm, while I'm ministering to people, people should bring their sick ones online or on the phone so that they be ministered to and so on. So we, we want to make sure that the two things that show that the kingdom is here, healing and casting out of demons take place, especially on Wednesdays. Please remember tomorrow and next tomorrow. Also remember to go to our website and please do contribute to our fundraising. Remember that um, I think it will be by tomorrow morning that we will post. We we'll finish doing that. We will post on our website about our partnership. Please, people need to begin to sponsor a missionary, sponsor a young girl, sponsor a child, sponsor pastors. We are on on those things. And so when you go to the donation button uh, on our website, um, when, when you make a donation, when you go to our partnership, you will see the various things you can donate to. And so when you go to our donation button and you donate, leave us a message on, on the box called, the, there is a message box. Leave us and say, this is for this. And we will make sure it just goes for that. There are churches that need to be built out there. And uh, we are involved with these people, with, uh, with, the, with this kind of ministries right now. Also, we need something for our radio and television programs. 
So I'm going to put all of that there. If you want to become a member of Millionaire 500, we'll put it all out there for you. Please thank you and God be with you. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.